wait for it. Okay, so uh, folks that were in my um, disasters class, I showed you a couple of slides from this earlier today. So um, just want to uh, reiterate, it's a good time, start of the semester, we're getting getting near the end of our, of our um, time together and you guys are, are starting to do interviews and all that kind of good stuff. And so I uh, wanted to just reiterate uh, some of these issues that we've talked about in the past in terms of um, best professional foot forward in the digital realm. Because even though we are um, leaving Zoom to an extent as we're going back to face-to-face -to -face and all that good stuff, um, clearly these tools are here to stay. And we wanna make sure that you all have mastered them and are, are um, continuing to master them as you move out into the career world. And, and I just, while, while Sean goes to the next slide, I'm just reflecting that, like, this is not something that, that I had to learn about in college. And like, I'm not, I'm not that old. I am not nearly as old as Dr. Anderson. Wow. Um, and like, when I was in college, like, I'd only ever seen one digital camera and it stored the pictures on a three and a half inch floppy disks. Right. So I didn't like. You say floppy disk, Dan. Floppy disks. Um, and so. <laughs> you like the world the world has really changed a lot in 20 years um and in some ways it's like it gives you like a huge this is a huge opportunity to do a couple of really like smart proactive things that could be really helpful for your career um and so that's like a really cool opportunity but like the other side of that coin is like there's a lot of like really interesting risks and challenges that you all are faced with that Dr. A and I didn't have to think about in the in the good old days. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think um, again, I think I might have told some of you guys a story, but um, way back when, when when things like Facebook and all these things were new, um, and we started, you know, um, joining social networks with our students, it became very clear that there were some things online that you that our students should not be putting online and that would not would not paint a great picture uh for them for a future employer and so so navigating that stuff was was um surprising and, and challenging um as we go forward these are here's some some things to think about as as we talk about your online identity so um, you really want to make sure that um, stuff you're putting out from from here on out is really intentional, as opposed to just sort of random tweets or random th things thrown up on the wall. A lot of that will stick, and so we want to make sure that you all are creating a professional, purpose-built identity um, in all of your interaction spaces, um, because as we've said before, you know your employers will Google you. Your employers, whether they're supposed to, not supposed to, they will. And so we want to make sure that you guys have a purposeful identity, um, and uh, you can do that. Uh, you can do it in many different ways, but we want to make sure that we're doing this in an inclusive way to reduce the likelihood that you all will be discriminated against in any way, shape, or form, um, uh, and um, and to be a positive force out there. Um, useful. So the information you're putting out should. Um, be helpful for folks if they're thinking about hiring you or what have you, stuff about your, your skill sets and, and abilities, things of that nature. Um, realize that as we move forward, and as you guys, may, maybe maybe you, you want to choose to keep your uh, website, maybe you want to use something else, but know that you have the choice and should have the choice where, when, what, with whom you're sharing your data, et cetera. And if you are engaged in an online platform that decides for you all these things and does not give you control over your identity, you might want to think very hard about staying involved with that platform, right? So it's there are many tools out there now for you all to engage with that give you much more granular control um, in terms of that stuff. And then, of course, uh, it, you also want to make sure that we're um, not putting out certain information regardless of the format so that you are creating a secure environment um, for uh, identity theft and all that all that stuff. Um, so let's talk about uh, your visual representation, right? So this is your avatar, your name, et cetera. And that's, that's mostly what we're just gonna talk about the last couple of minutes here. Um, so professional quality images, representations, 
should be unique to you. It should be people can look at this and identify that that's you. If they bump into you at a, at a conference and then they're looking for you uh, on your website or whatever, oh yes, that's the lady that I met at the, at the whatever meeting. Um, uh, should be able to, to scale this to different uh, settings. You can use the same image, but you should be able to adapt it if needed. And you all own and control your image. Again, not the social media platform or the whoever thing. You own your pictures of yourself and your uh, representation of yourself. There's all kinds of ways to, to manipulate and, and change and adapt. Um, and you know, we encourage you guys to, to experiment and, and try out things and see how they look and realize that these images can be seen in different formats. Some of them are, are on Zoom, some of them are, are, are smaller icons, etc. All of your avatars or headshots should be an original dedicated image. Okay, so, so I know we sometimes grab that, that photo from the, from the wedding or, you know, prom or whatever. Uh, don't. I know the temp it's, it's tempting. Um, take a good solid shot, have your roommate, have, have your friend, what have you, um, get a, a good purposeful image for your uh, representation here. That image should be you as you. So no mask on, no sunglasses, no, no partially hidden Halloween costumes, none of that kind of stuff, right? So even though we are masked in many of our face-to-face -face interactions right now, your image should be um, uh, fully identifiable as you. Look straight at the camera. A little bit of smile helps. Some, some of you guys have photos that are kind of like, mm, you know, a little bit of smile. Um, you don't have to be, you know, the joker freaking out, ah, but, but at least a positive um, impression. Generally speaking, if you can have these be a bit contrasting, that background in your face, et cetera, that'll make you stand out and look a little more, uh, a little better. Um, and generally speaking, while, Ba different backgrounds can work well. As uh, If you're not sure, simple background is the best to start with. Um, as you do that, you're going to want to frame your image. So we can take photos that are landscape, etc. Some of our uh, social media presentations, such as on um, uh, Twitter or Slack or, or things of that nature, is actually a square format. Um, others are, uh, you know, as again, again, rectangular, or whatever. So if you take one photo, that's, for example, that rectangular thing, you can crop it to make the circle, the square, um, whatever your case may be. And again, uh, recommended, the, the people that think about this for a living recommend you use the same image from platform to platform, again, creating the cohesive identity across your digital spaces. Um, so here's some examples. Uh, I'm not trying. To make can I just can I just jump on that one really quick? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'll just say um, do this with the best camera that you can find yeah. access to. Um, if you have a buddy with you know like a new iPhone, like that's going to be actually a really good camera. If you have someone that has like a proper digital SLR, that's better. Um, there is a a positive correlation between. Um, how people will think about your image and the quality of the camera used to create it. Um, so don't do it with, you know, an old Android phone that's 10 years old. Totally, totally. Um, and uh, you can actually check out really good cameras from Broom Library. Like just for the day, you guys could all do this and check out the key. Y'all could do this. You could check out the camera and take each other's headshots. Kind of a fun thing to do. Totally, 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 totally. So uh, once you get that, so, okay, so here we go. So here's, some, here, here's a couple of examples. So um, Evan, Eli, right? These could be great photos for your blog post or your, your illustrating, illustrating whatever. But um, as much as this is, is cool uh, with, you know, got a fish and outside and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, in the shadow, sunglasses on, we wanna have a, a, a up, up front photo that, that, that features that. Same with uh, the Eli over here. Uh, you know, again, could be great for the story you're trying to tell, but, but we want one without masks and, and that kind of stuff. Next, wanna make sure that, um, so, so even if this was the correct exposure on this, um, you know, our, our, our face is a small part of the overall um, space in the image. Let's, um, assuming that photo is great, all we would need to do is recrop that. So let's crop it and such that your face is going to fill 
the space. So here's um, a, a quick grab from this weekend from my Slack from Disasters. And again, so this one seems good. John seems good. Uh, Margaret's good. Charlene's good. Jack's good. Um, Brooks a little bit small. Alexis a little bit small. Dylan a little bit small. Right. So, so um, you know, we can just take Alexis the same picture and just crop it and and be that much um, that much better. Um, on to teleconferencing, right? So we're all here in Zoom land, teleconferencing land, Skype land, uh, uh, whatever we happen to be using. And as we've all learned over, over the last two years, there's certain things that work, certain things that don't work. Um, hopefully we've all figured out those horrible things about uh, having doors closed and, and, and being present. And we can all name those examples. Um, just to reiterate some of the stuff that you should be uh, practicing, fully engaged, fully focused when we're on this platform. Um, certainly in job interviews and things of that nature, but even in things that are less, uh, less uh, high stakes, right? A little bit of leaning in, a little bit of smiling, a little bit of nodding when, when Dr. Reinemann says a point or something like that, right? That's going to um, promote a better understanding, more community, um, and more togetherness, even when we are separated. Um, uh, and just like Dan, just like Dr. Reinemann said, um, absolutely. It would be great if you had the world's most famous whatever broadcasting booth, but you don't need that, right? You can take the, a good photo of yourself with the technology that you have. And so um, we'll show some examples of that and some options you have in a second. But your default in our, in our teleconferencing should be with your camera on, mic off when other people are talking. Um, uh, appearance, again, professional dress, um, avoid problematic patterns. The biggest problem we have in terms of um, teleconferencing is when people have like really strong checkered patterns or very, very strong um, uh, uh, stripes. Those can sometimes uh, cause some issues with cameras. Um, as much as they might look cool in, in the real world, they can, they can uh, get issues. Uh, check our grooming, check our posture, check our, some of our nervous twitches, that kind of stuff. Um, frame your image to avoid distractions, right? So if you have a, um, a, I don't know, a roommate or somebody behind you, right? A little bit of changed angle of your uh, camera. Um, camera at eye level, right? So none of this, none of this kind of stuff or, or that kind of stuff pretty much right at eye level is, is ideal um, for us. Oops. Um, and then again, if we're, we are in a meeting or anything of that nature, uh, check the materials, check the agenda before we get going and, and review that so that you are uh, coming off as prepared and relaxed. As far as stuff that you can use, quality camera, just like uh, Dr. Reinemann said, um, if you are feeling that your, so for example, my camera here on my computer is I don't know, four years old, five years old, something like that. This phone, way better. My phone from three years ago, way better camera than this. So it's relatively easy to, uh, you can get a webcam, um, which is cool. That's going to cost you, you know, the decent ones are, you know, hundred bucks ish, something like that. But you can also use any of your, um, your existing phone, an old phone, what have you. And they're all, they'll almost all be way better than your default camera, uh, your default computer camera. And you can get something like this EpoCam app for five, 10 bucks, and you can wirelessly um, have your uh, camera being the input to Zoom. So, so you might, need, might be able to spend a little bit of money. You do not need to spend a lot. Strong light on your face, either from a window or from a lamp or, or some other illumination source. Want that right on your face. Um, and we would like a non-distracting, we talked about before, a plain background. Um, or at least something that's going to allow you to be in the forefront. So we don't want to be competing with whatever the heck is, is around us, behind us. Quality microphone. Most of our computer microphones are fine. Um, but if you were to have some, some issue, whatever, we want to get you um, uh, an additional microphone. And related to that also, um, you want to be focused and isolated on the conversation going back and forth. And so if you are in a noisy room or or there's potential distraction or a lawnmower outside or what have you, right? Again, uh, just popping in our headphones, uh, you know, plugged in, wired into the computer um, is a great uh, solution. So all of this um, you guys uh, either have on demand or can get for a very um, little bit of effort, little, little, little cost. Hey, Dr. A, quick question. Oh, if yeah. I, if, if for example, I had a really super important interview and I wanted to like go onto campus and have, you know, 
reliable internet and access to these things can is there like are there like zoom booths that students can check out is there have you ever heard of such a thing i know that uh, like you or i could do that at, at the teaching and learning innovations center but the students uh, have a so we don't have that we don't we don't have a a specific booth for students but absolutely we have um those uh spaces in the library and increasingly elsewhere some of the new buildings we're constructing we're constructing right now will have those but we also have some of these different um uh, uh pods in different places um um there's there's some um seating areas in in well in some of our wellness centers and things but mostly i would say if you guys are looking for that um by all means go check out the library also do realize esr that our labs are open esrn labs are open and if you guys were going to do an interview and you're like, man, I really want a quiet space, talk to me, talk to Dr. Reinemann, talk to Zach and say, hey, Zach, on, sir, can I jump into um, the ESRM you know, tech lab on Tuesday morning at 10? And as long as you don't have a class in there, absolutely. Um, we also can get you into some other rooms, for example, in Sierra Hall, some of our smaller conference rooms, which are not used by classes. That um, that would be a uh, it's, it's not a booth, but it's a, a small small conference room. If you guys wanted that for your um, for your interviews, absolutely good strong internet, uh, non distraction, quiet spaces, totally. You guys just let us know and we'll we'll get you hooked up. Great question. Other questions? I've been I've been rambling on. Other questions so far? You guys have been wondering about some of these things we're talking about. Okay, so then, um, uh, so a little bit of uh, Zoom professionalism here. So just some examples. So uh, uh, I, I blurred out people's names here, I'm not trying to identify people, but just to sh show some examples here. So um, uh, again, don't want to have the camera looking, you know, looking up at us, right? We want an eye level. Um, sometimes we get the so sometimes we can have a, a plain background. We could have a um, uh, say a background that maybe is related to the the say the talk we're giving or something of that nature. Be careful with that. Uh, this this I think is fine with this um, uh, forest background behind this speaker here. Um, this guy, um, uh, it, a great idea, but I would say it's a little distracting. Um, and, and and you guys tell me you you guys tell me what you think about these backgrounds. But but in general, I would I think this would have been better if it was all just this sort of dark blue uh, background um, behind this gentleman. But what do you guys think? Any any feedback on these on these uh, uh, backgrounds and 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 visualizations of these folks? Yeah, Paul's makes me want to go scuba diving. Paul makes you want to go scuba. So you're thinking about scuba diving and not and not uh, listening to his uh, discussion. Okay, cool. I feel like it would be um, really good, like to put like something that blurred the image out, so you could like, especially the um, like aerial look at like that forested area. Like mm -hmm. you'd still see that it was like a green space, but not distracting where you see all the small details. Okay, so yeah, so Rebecca here is bl has a, has the blur function on. Daniel has the blur function on. Laura has the blur function on. But um, Paul and Nina are are just uh, regular. Uh, uh, images mm -hmm. good other thoughts or other observations okay how about how about this one so a larger meeting a lot of them are pretty distracting like yeah. the background and stuff yeah yeah so i'm i have this there's too, much too bright a window behind me right so this is this is and, and it's and I'm looking down at the computer, right? So it's not like I said, it should be my eye level. Um, uh, uh, when this guy's talking, he's he's uh, this is actually pretty good, I think. I mean, he's he's um, he's lit up well, and we can see him talking, right? Um, other folks, uh, this person sort of looking down, which you know we look down as something in the world, but but um, right, a, li a little distracting here with this background. Um, uh, a little, you know, too dark here for this lady. Washed out over here. Um, um, yeah, so good. So uh, other other observations from the crowd here, you guys. Hey, Sean. I think it's it's good that they know that when they use virtual backgrounds, 
if they move forward and backward, they can disappear. Right. Totally. Yeah, and that's what that's what uh, that's what th that's what happened in this guy right here, right? <laughs> you had San Francisco, and then he just he left. He became uh, a headless uh, speaker. Absolutely. Awesome. Other other feedback for this one? Are there other impressions? Okay. So um, so there's all kinds of resources that are out there now, and I would encourage you guys to look at those. So. Um, some of these are communities, some of these are fun, some of these are, are more individual feedback. Room Raider is the one that got a whole bunch of attention early on in the pandemic. And, and this was um, a guy sort of tongue in cheek who was sort of making light of things, but basically he would review people's backgrounds, right? So, so what worked well, what didn't work well, et cetera. And here's just a couple examples. And so this would be a place you could check out and again, get a sense of, oh yeah, I see why, why, that, why that would be distracting. I see why that, that is good. Um, uh, most of these folks are uh, doing pretty well by uh, Room Raider's view, except for this guy who's in this sort of green, sort of sickly and sort of oversaturated color background that maybe doesn't give the impression we'd like to if say we were doing, you know, a job interview, probably hire that dude, hire her, hire her. This guy, I'm like, hmm, I don't know, maybe he's a little, making me a little queasy. I love the leaner books in her library. A couple <laughs> leaners. <laughs> uh, it's the little things. Um, okay, so then lastly, just to finish up here, uh, just another quick comment. So that was our, our visual portrayal in our digital online identity. Let's just end with a little quick conversation about our, our nomenclature, how we're, how we're articulating ourselves. Um, so when we're, when we're on Zoom or other such platforms, we want to make sure we have our, our name out there. Uh, and while sometimes we want to have our affiliations, pronouns, those are all cool, those are all good. But be careful. Increasingly, I'm seeing um, so many or such a long affiliation or so many pronouns that, again, in a small screen space, they bleed off and you can't read them. And so if, if given the format, uh, these things are, are, are not going to be able to fit on, we need to make some, some judgment calls, right? So we can put, put that our affiliation maybe as a logo um, you know, on the screen behind us or something of that nature. I think that's important. But um, it doesn't help anybody to have part of your name and then dot, 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 and then people not able to see um, the rest of, of your identity. Um, and again, the key point here is to make it easier for folks to address you. And so, uh, so if, if you prefer your, your nickname or what have you, you know, please uh, do use that. Um, and then when it comes to things that are not uh, just the, <clears throat> the item on the Zoom, so your web address, your email address, um, a couple quick things here, but um, avoid excessive use of numbers, right? Where it's your, your name and then five, 10 letters or, or, or other uh, numbers after your name. Um, and ideally your website should be, if you guys are gonna keep your, your website identity and you're gonna create your own unique domain name, ideally something that's easy to remember and illustrative of your goals, your professional uh, engagement. And so just end with this. And so this is, these are some examples of student emails or, or, or previous student emails that um, maybe weren't the best uh, in terms of a professional setting um, on the left. And then on the right are, are much better um, ones. So uh, first initial, last name, first name, last name, um, uh, or a description that's actually a professional, uh, an in, in, in indication of what, you're do, what, you, what you are doing or would like to do professionally, that kind of stuff. So all, that, all these things are not the most important thing in the world, but as we're managing our digital identity, we wanna make sure that we are, are being professional in the full, uh, full circle of our identity. And with that, I'll just ask if uh, Dan or Russell or anybody else has any other suggestions in terms of uh, 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 fixing up our digital identity and, and tightening up our images, et cetera. Okay. Uh, I, could, I, could, I could say something. Yeah, please, Rihanna. Um, I think after like capstone prep, I was, once we did like looked our identities up and stuff, I was totally freaking out because I had like stuff from middle school that I had no access to. So I went, I went back and found out all the passwords to those emails and deleted all those like old accounts and stuff. So I would recommend doing that just because that stuff does pop up um, and it is kind of embarrassing. So that's like one recommendation I can give you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, great one. It's, it's always good to, 
um, especially before we s send in our applications or big round of stuff, do a quick, you know, self check, right? Self and and self check it. Uh, definitely search Google yourself, but also go incognito, right? So so see what people that hadn't been searching your name for the last year or whatever, or or, or many years, what they see when they come, uh, you know, naively to to typing your name in a search engine. So great, yeah, great point. Other comments or other suggestions or observations that folks have? Okay. I'll, I'll just, right, that I'm gonna jump in here, just Sean very briefly and saying, as someone who has reviewed hundreds of resumes and hired a lot of people in like intern and just out of undergrad, I have dealt with this issue. <laughs> and I have seen some things, I have some stories um, that uh, it, it, can, it, 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 it can be a big deal in, cert, in certain situations for sure. So it is a real thing. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, dude. Totally. I completely agree. Completely agree. All right. Uh, unless anybody else has anything else to, to say, I think, uh, I think we are probably good. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I will open up um, 